But I don't need a lot of money. Y'all got to hear what I'm saying. What I really need is the love of God to receive the love that God offers to me on a regular basis. Anybody hear what I'm saying? This is what my primary need is. first one if you'll read the next one I guess I need to ask you to stand again thank you verse 1 says I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable to God which is your reasonable service and be be not not conformed to this this world. world But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Now, I want you to, if you just place your Bibles beside you and join somebody's hand. I want to believe God together. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the things that you've spoken to this body thus far. I thank you for the moving of the Holy Spirit, which we cannot conjure up. You delight in moving in our midst. So we want to thank you for it, Father. And Lord, I thank you now that we're coming in agreement with your mind and your will. Lord, to bind back every subtle attempt of the enemy to play upon our minds in any way Lord God and and by the power and the authority of Jesus name we agree with your spirit we agree with your word Lord God we bring our thoughts and our minds and our attitudes and subjection to your holy will It's in Jesus' name we thank you, and Lord, we bind the contrary forces, we forbid them, and we cancel their every plot and every attempt to interfere in our minds and in our thoughts of what you're saying to us and what you've been saying today. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say it. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Now, you might be wondering about the subject that I'm about to share. Well, how in the world is that supposed to play? But the subject that I'm going to talk about is frozen anger. Frozen anger. As I was thinking about the frozen anger, I thought about three different aspects of anger. One was misdirected anger one was anger out of control and another one was anger under control and the frozen anger has to do more with anger that's under control the anger that is out of control moves into rage when a person starts to either throw in objects or they cannot handle their emotions are out of whack. And um, misdirected anger can deal with a person. A mother may have a child out of wedlock, and um, for some reason the man leaves them, leaves her uh, to raise the child by herself and doesn't want to have anything to do with the child. And so the mother gets very angry. And so her anger is directed 
at the child, and so the child may suffer half or all of his life uh, for something that they had no control over. But that's kind of a small example of misdirected or anger, misguided anger, uh, anger that was intended at somebody else, but it obviously hit the wrong object. But, uh, uh, but today, as I said, frozen anger. And um, anger is an emotion. Everybody agree with that? And emotions are related to thinking, right? Are you with me? Emotions are related to thinking. And uh, it is hard for a person to know if they are angry or if they have frozen anger. Uh, when a person has anger and they know they have anger, anger and so on, that's one of the obvious ones. But the frozen anger is the kind that a person, a person may not know necessarily that they have anger. And uh, this, for some reason, the Lord uh, gave this to me a couple of days ago. I was sitting up in worship, and, and he spoke to me about talking about healing again, but then uh, he said, frozen anger. And, but since anger is an emotion, and just anger in itself by itself is not a, a bad emotion. It's one of those emotions just like fear and, uh, and all the other emotions which were given by God. So it's, it's, it's purpose. So just in itself, anger is not bad. And, uh, but it's when anger is misguided. Anger is uh, um, stewed, uh, brooded over, stewed, and uh, it becomes negative and it becomes harmful. Uh, and that's when anger gets, uh, uh, it, it becomes uh, sinful and, and detrimental. Because the Bible does say, Ang- be angry and sin not. Am I right? And the Bible points out that Jesus got angry in the times that God had got angry. So if anger was sinful, then God would never be angry. So I want to make that clear. And, uh, but anger in itself is not bad, but it's when anger is out of control or anger is necessarily brewed and stewed over a period of time and it becomes, it moves into bitterness or it becomes uh, uh, something else that it interferes with a person's ability to love, or some, a person's ability to forgive, and then it, it moves into something else. So anger is an emotion. Can you say that with me? And emotions are related to thinking. All right, so now right away we know that uh, there's a cure for anger. And here Paul says in, in um, Romans 12 that... Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your what? By the renewing of your mind. So the mind plays a very, very vital part in our relationship to God. The mind, the thoughts, the thought life. And that's what I want you to really go with me and think about it. And, 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 and uh, we'll try not to be too long, but I want to really just try to belabor this point about thinking. And so when we're thinking about moving from frozen anger to a person of peace and faith and love, we want to uh, remind us all that in order to change, we must change the way we think, right? Now, it's not something that God is going to do for us. God will heal us. Are you with me? But God will not renew our thinking We have to get in the word, right? We have to look at truth. What God will do is as we are faithful to read or meditate or study his word, he will open it up. He will reveal that truth to us so that it will help us, right? So as he reveals truth to us, 
And it began to replace erroneous thinking. It starts to change us. Are you with me? This is how we change. And sometimes we can spend a number of years, I've been guilty, of waiting for God to change us just by his power alone, right? But even if he sets us free and we do not renew our minds, then it's only, get this, a matter of time when we'll be right back in that situation because of the way we think. Everybody with me? That's why the Word of God is so important, and we'll talk about that later. But uh, <clears throat> um, and I was, as I was studying here, uh, there's another scripture found in Philippians 4, chapter 8, and I want to read that. You Bible students already know probably what it is, but And I'm doing my best to slow down and to communicate. That's what I want to do today. I want to communicate. Philippians 4, 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever or whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, honest, whatsoever things are just, just, Whatsoever things are pure, pure. Whatsoever things are lovely, lovely. Whatsoever things are of good report, good report. If there be any virtue or, and if there be any praise, think on these things. You see the importance of right thinking. Everybody with me? So the Lord is really beginning to make this clear. Right thinking is key to changing our behavior or actions. If you don't get nothing else that I said, just get that. All right? It is not some cataclysmic something that's going to change us. It is not some sweeping move of God that's going to change our behavior. Now, he can deliver us and set us free, right? But then it's up to us to get in the word, to be committed to change, right? To reprogramming our thought life. So in order to know where we're thinking wrong, we have to read the word of God, right? I don't just know where I'm thinking wrong because uh, there's some underlying things that's deep inside that I may not know exactly or catch or be able to delineate that I'm thinking wrong. So in order for me to get help, in order for you to get help, when we read the word of God prayerfully, why? Because the word of God is living, alive, and powerful. So the word of God is able to help me or to discern my motives, my wrong thinking. Are you with me? So if I'm going to change, I need to be able to get to the root of how I think. Are you with me? If I don't get to the root of how I'm thinking, I can spend years waiting for something that may never happen. But if I get in touch with the thinking, how I'm thinking, through the word of God, for the Bible says man shall not live, somebody say live, by food alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We live that way. Are you with me? 
We led the way. So now this is, this is, this is what the Lord was saying. So, and as he was, uh, I was reading the book uh, uh, concerning a couple, I won't call their name, but um, they wrote a book some years ago, and uh, I had it for many years, but uh, I was reading it, and uh, I, I just walked through my little library, and all of a sudden, and I do this all the time. You know, I, there's a lot of books I haven't read halfway through or just sitting up on my shelf. Some of them I read through. But at any given moment, I can walk by and then stop, and then the Holy Spirit will say, read that, or pull that book off the shelf. And there's always something for me in it. And so this time, he, I walked back by, by this shelf in my library, and then he pointed me to about three or four books. He said, pull that one, pull that one, pull that one. So I took them and set them aside. So now it was my, uh, my turn to look into those books and to find out what the Holy Spirit wanted to show me, right? And uh, so that's kind of how he deals with me. But So in that process, he made it clear that an individual's outlook is important. How we view things in life, right, is important. And you know the story, the old saying about the glass being half empty or half full. I, I know you've, many of you have heard that, especially if you're dealing with uh, 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 the mind psychology or Christian counsel or whatever, uh, positive thinking, whatever. But I'm not talking positive thinking here. I'm talking about um, sifting truth from its counterfeit. Truth according to the word of God. So the old story, the thought about a, half, a glass halfway full or halfway empty. The way I view life, the way you view life, if you look at that glass, and if you've never experienced it, and somebody says, how much water is there in that glass? And if you say it's half empty, or you say it's halfway, and then I say halfway what? If you say it's halfway empty, that tells me how you look at life. But if you say it's halfway full, then it also tells me how you look at life. All right? So in other words, what are you saying, Brother Harry? I'm saying that that can tell a person how they view life. If, I, if you view life that that glass... It's half empty. Now, what that means, what that says is that, boy, in a little while, it's going to be empty, right? So I focus on what's, what I don't have, right? Or if it's half full, then I say, man, I still got a lot more because it's halfway full, right? So it tells a person's view in life. So anyway, he kind of used that to remind me of how we see things, how we view things. So and if, the, if, if a person looks at the glass and says, well, it's half empty, that means in his life or in her life, they, all, they tend to focus on what's missing in their life. Y'all with me? Or what they don't have. Are you with me? But if a person can look at that and right away say, well, it's half full. That means they have a tendency to see what's already provided in life. Now, which, look at your neighbor and say, which one are you? So, but I thought that was a good reminder, just such a good reminder. It just really blessed me to no end. But the point, it was, it was so important to make this thing clear. Um, so if a person looks at life, and all, mostly what they see is what's missing, what they don't have, then that person needs to be brought into a closer, listen to this, relationship with God. Are you with me? And by receiving his love and thanking him for what he has already given. All right? So, if, if, when, a, so when a person... Begin to receive God's love because God's love is always there to help us, right? But the important thing is to receive God's love because once you, we, we receive God's love, it affirms us and makes us to know that we are okay in his sight. All right, you with me? But if we don't receive his love, then how can we give love? 
when we have not received. See, in other words, what's good, what's important in life, in life is a relationship with God to receive God's love and to thank him for what he's already done. Now, when this happened, when uh, I am convinced, when you're convinced of God's love for me and you individually, then we become grateful. Somebody say grateful. Doesn't matter what's going on around us, but we become grateful once we are convinced that God loves us. I was so blessed by that. And so once we're convinced of that God loves us, then we become grateful. And a grateful heart, a grateful heart is a heart that has joy and praise toward God. But if a heart's not grateful, and someone say, we just need to praise God, a person may add, now I got to praise the Lord. I got a whole list of things that I need to do. And now I'm not praising God, so I got to add that to my list. Y'all hear what I'm saying? But when we are convinced of God's love, when we're convinced of God's love, it is so fulfilling. There's nobody, there's no, no person, nothing can satisfy us like God's love for us. Nothing in life can do that to us. And so uh, when a, a person do not understand that and they have need of love, then they can spend countless number of years not knowing what's important in life and be miserable for all of their lives. Are oh, you hearing me? So God says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by some words from God. Three quarters of the Bible. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So that tells me that I need God. That's, that's my big need. I need God. I don't need a lot of money. It would be nice, but I don't need a lot of money. Oh, Y'all got to hear what I'm saying. What I really need is the love of God to receive the love that God offers to me on a regular basis. Anybody hear what I'm saying? This is what my primary need is. And Once that need is met, and once I find out about his purpose and plan for my life that gives me the identity and the purpose for my existence. And nothing can touch that in this world. Nothing. No material thing can touch this. And so what happens there? What are you saying, Brother Heron? I'm saying what God makes so clear is you may feel like I need this. If this situation would change, I would be all right. Or if this circumstance would change, I could really serve the Lord. But it's like the Lord said, no, you wouldn't. Because you don't know what you really need. What I need and what you need is more of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So gratitude and praise... A grateful heart brings joy and contentment. A grateful heart. Now, so how are we going to get to this uh, uh, gratitude? We first got to receive God's love for us individually, right? As we receive God's love for us and we're convinced of his love, we become grateful. We become grateful. Circumstances cannot satisfy us. And so we don't spend our time dreaming, hoping, and wondering if life would change for us. 
we find contentment because we met the one that fulfills our very lives. That's what the church need. That's what every human being need because man was made for God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We were made for God. We were made for God and not for ourselves. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, now uh, I want you to chew on that meditative. Gratitude and praise come from focusing on who God is and what he has provided, not on circumstances. Because the Lord said, don't take any thought about tomorrow, what you're going to eat or drink, da, da, da. The person that have need, they say, how can you say this, Lord? Because the Lord knows that he's sufficient when we embrace him. If I'm afraid, when I embrace God, he heal, takes care of the fear, right? Fear leaves. Whatever the need is, just make it more. Okay, now, so the outlook is important. How we see things. I want you to take a moment and ask yourself this question. How do I view life? How am I viewing life? Am I viewing life like I, there's so many things missing in my life, so I'm not happy? Or am I viewing life like I am so thankful to be connected to the living God? Because all of my need are met in him. Which one? Meditate on that. Okay, the second thing is the love of God, when it's received, and I mentioned this already, but I want to make it clear. The love of God, when it's received, will transform our thinking. When the love of God is received, it will transform our thinking. The love of God can, can settle us. The love of God can settle us, just settle us right down. You ever seen somebody anxious, they're frustrated, they're worried about tomorrow, worried about this year? And, 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 and when they're in that state there, uh, they, don't know, they don't know whether God's going to do something, whether God's going to provide or what, is, what is going to happen in this situation. So there's constant anxiety and so on. But God settles us. He says, I got it. Don't worry. I got it. I'm, I care for you. I got it. So he settles us right now, right? God, in other words, God is a father like no other father. So that when God's love is received, I want, you to, want us to get this, it will transform our thinking. Stop.